OK, so this is the, the draft of the coursework. So the coursework's worth 40% uh, of the whole module. Uh, and this is the structure that we have. So in week 9, we have test 1. And then week 14, we have test 2. And then at the end of week 15, we have the coursework and um, so you should find the coursework draft here. So what we'd like you to do is to be able to look ahead and into the future and see how cryptography might change. So the methods that we'll look at there are what are called next generation cryptography. There are six uh, possible areas that you could investigate. So you need to pick one of them and one that you might be most interested in. Uh, the first one is uh, zero knowledge proofs. So with zero knowledge proofs, we have a method that we can prove things such as our password without actually giving away our, we can prove that we still know our password without actually uh, uh, revealing it. Then we have homomorphic encryption methods, and that's ways that we can operate on encrypted uh, data values. So we might add two encrypted values together and get a result that we can then decrypt. Then in a world of IoT, we need new types of cryptography methods which are less uh, draining on the battery, also maybe take less processing power and possibly consume less memory. So if you're interested, you can look at some of the lightweight cryptography methods. Uh, NIST has a short list of possible methods, but there are a, a range of these. Um, and obviously we need to cover things like symmetric key encryption and the possibility of using uh, uh, new hashing methods and also public key methods. Then there's quantum robust cryptography, quite a, a challenging area uh, to look at, but Obviously, when uh, quantum computers come along, they are likely to crack our elliptic curve and RSA uh, methods. So you might want to just do a little review around quantum robust cryptography. Then there are key distribution centers, which are becoming extremely important. And that's how we can control the keys that we have in our infrastructure so that when we have any connections, we can make sure that uh, we generate uh, trusted keys. And then anything really around blockchain integration would be really interested in. So your tasks are to perform a literature review around your area. Uh, so you might use Google Scholar to be able to find the current research papers that uh, would cover the area that you would want. After that, make a basic prototype. So find a GitHub with some lightweight cryptography and try it out with some test vectors and see if you can get it to work. So we're not asking you to write too much code, but to download code and and then evaluate uh, and then be able to validate its operation and then to be able to, in the next part, evaluate its performance. So in this part here, you might run the code and evaluate how long it takes to run, how much CPU it uses, just some sort of metric that would allow you to understand how well your code is actually running. So then you have your uh, the report as uh, up to 15 pages, uh, an introduction, just outlining uh, the the area that you're addressing and what the key focus of your coursework is. An outline literature review uh, should follow. Then little code snippets of the code that you're actually using. Remember to reference. Uh, the code if you're taking it from someone else's github and any code that you're using that yeah, you've added a little explanation of the code around it then an evaluation section where you might saw some uh, results as a minimum at least a validation test to show that your code actually works with with test vectors if you can perform an evaluation that allows you to understand how well your code is running and then some conclusions. So the marking schedule is that you'll get 20% for the quality of your literature review, the research that you've taken, 25% for your implementation and how well you explain the code. Uh, we'll give you 20% if you can bring in any new features, if there's any new ways of presenting something in an interesting way. 20% for the quality of your evaluation and then finally 15% for the overall layout of the coursework and the usage of references. 
if possible, submit it as a PDF or a Word document, and we'll give you the link for that. It would be good also to create your own personal private GitHub and to add the code there with the coursework. This will make it easier for us to see the work that you've actually done. OK, so remember that we have a Slack channel that you can ask questions on. OK, so that's a brief outline of the coursework.